is West Virginia quarterback Garrett Green being overlooked and underrated going into the 2024 college football season? That's exactly what we're discussing here on the show today. So stick around and we'll talk about it right after this word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up? Welcome in. Come on in. Make yourself comfortable. Bell yourself up to the bar. Let me pour you out another shot of top shelf college football content. On tap at Coos's Corner today, we're talking about Garrett Green, West Virginia quarterback. And is he underrated? Is is he being overlooked? Uh, not only nationally, but even within those in the Big 12. And I, I went back and looked, and I feel like he is. And I'm at the end of this video, I'll post a link to my Big 12 quarterback rankings going in, going into 2024. I have Garrett Green in my top five. Uh, I don't remember exactly where I put him, but he was in my top five. I do know that. But a lot of people don't even have him in their top five. And with the numbers he put up last year, with the turnaround West Virginia made last year and year one with him as a starter, I feel like he might be being overlooked a bit. So I decided to dig in and look and do some research. And I'm going to show you at the near the end here a spreadsheet I put together comparing Garrett Green with a few other Big 12 quarterbacks. But first of all, I'm going to show you some graphics and, and some articles where Garrett Green is ranked outside the top five in the Big 12. Not, not nationally. Now, PFF, PFF respects Garrett Green. Pro Football Focus says that Garrett Green might be, and I'm paraphrasing, but they said Garrett Green might be the most underrated quarterback in the country coming into 2024. He has extremely high PFF grades. They think he's underrated. And that's on the national level. So let's let's look at some Big 12 quarterback rankings. The first one I'm going to show you is this one. Now, this is one that was put out by 365 Sports. I don't it wasn't by one of the hosts, I don't think, to put it out. I think it was just someone, one of their behind the scenes folks, but they put out their top five Big 12 quarterbacks. Cam Rising, Noah Fafita, KJ Jefferson at three, which I made me raise my eyebrows Shador Sanders at four and Rocco Beck from Iowa state at five. Another one that kind of made me raise my eyebrows. And I'm thinking, first off, there's no Jalen Daniels on the list. Maybe they're assuming he'll be injured and there's no Garrett green. How can you put Rocco Beck and KJ Jefferson, both above Garrett green that, that really struck a chord with me and it made me raise my eyebrows again. I just don't see it. Or at least I didn't then we'll see what the numbers show here in a minute. Then now here's another list. Now this list was put out by Paul Catalina, one of the co-hosts over at 365 Sports, and he has Noah Fafita, Avery Johnson, the redshirt freshman from Kansas State at number two, Jalen Daniels at three, Shador Sanders at four, and Cam Rising at five. And I'm sorry it cuts off a little bit at the bottom, so I wasn't able to show the 365 Sports graphic, but this was from from their from their X account. And I'm thinking, okay, you have. Everybody on that list I can kind of understand except Avery Johnson. The young man, look, he's he's extremely talented. He's extremely athletic. And the future looks bright for Kansas State with him under the helm. But he's only started, what, one, one game, and that was the bowl game? Now, he put up decent numbers, but it didn't set the world on fire. And I just don't understand whatever – I mean, yes, he's a good quarterback, but to put him number two in the Big 12 – I love you, Paul. 365 Sports, one of my favorite shows on YouTube. But I do not agree with having Avery Johnson 2 on this list. Now, I'm going to show you a couple more lists where Garrett Green, I felt, could have been a little too low. The first one is this one right here, and it's from Sporting News, ranking every starting quarterback in Big 12 Conference in 2024. Shador Sanders at one. Avery, they had Avery Johnson at two as well. And here's their reasoning. It says a lot that Kansas State felt confident enough in Johnson's abilities. They let 2023 starter Will Howard leave for NIL riches at Ohio State. It's because Johnson could be the next Jaden Daniels. Here's the thing. Could be the next Jaden Daniels. 
He's not yet. And we're talking about 2024, yet they have him at number two. Four, Rocco Becht, sophomore from Iowa State. Becht is one of 19 starters who returned for the Cyclones after he won Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year in 23. Becht threw for 3,210 yards, 23 touchdowns, and eight interceptions. Iowa State went six, six and three in the Big 12 with Becht in 23. No small task. They have KJ Jefferson at five, who's transferring to UCF from Arkansas. Says, Jefferson is one of the most experienced quarterbacks in the country with 39 starts over the last five seasons at Arkansas, where he holds almost every significant quarterback record and spent the last three seasons as a full-time starter. UCF struggled to a 3-6 and six record in, first, in its first year in the Big 12 in 23, but if Jefferson can get back to being one of the nation's best dual-threat quarterbacks, he could turn that around under head coach Gus Malzahn. Now, we all know Gus Malzahn's had good success with quarterbacks like K.J. Jefferson. Uh, you guys remember someone by the name of Cam Newton? Well, yeah, Gus Malzahn was his offensive coordinator at Auburn. So anyway, you got Cam rising at six and now all the way down to number seven before you get to Garrett Green. And here's what the sporting news had to say about Garrett Green, the senior at West Virginia. We put Green behind Utah's Cam rising on purpose. He's a player who reminds us a lot of how rising played when he was healthy. Green is undersized at 5'11", 205, but he's fearless, and he had 3,178 yards of total offense and 29 total touchdowns, 16 passing and 13 rushing. And they got Jalen Daniels at eight. So I, some of these lists just make me scratch my head. But anyway, now let's look at another list here. This one from another national media outlet, Yahoo Sports. They have Green at six, and it says Green burst onto the scene last season after years as a backup, throwing for 2,406 yards and 16 touchdowns to just four interceptions. Pro Football Focus called him, quote, the most underrated quarterback in college football entering next year, end quote. Green also rushed for an eye-popping 772 yards and 13 touchdowns for West Virginia in 2023, making him one of the Big 12's most dangerous weapons at the QB position. And last but not least, I want to show you what our, all of our friend here over at, uh, well, it's Phil Steele. It does his own magazine, Phil Steele Magazine. Here's what Phil Steele, where Phil Steele had Garrett Green rated. Phil Steele's 2024 preseason Big 12 team at quarterback. First team, should, or first team Cam Rising. Second team, Shador Sanders. Third team, Noel Fafita. Fourth team. Rocco Becht, Iowa State. So again, Rocco Becht ranked ahead of Garrett Green. Now, I have no issues with Cam Rising, Shador Sanders, or Noah Fafita being ranked ahead of Garrett Green because of their body of work, what we saw from them last season, and the numbers they put up. But when I saw that Rocco Becht was ranked ahead of Green, and in some of the other lists, you saw Avery Johnson ranked ahead of Green, and even KJ Jefferson, it really made me scratch my head. So I decided, you know what? Let's compare them. So I put together a little spreadsheet here that I'm going to let you all take a look at with me. And here is what it shows. Now, here's the, looking at the numbers side by side. When you look at attempts, look at attempts, completions, yards, yards per attempt, touchdowns, completion percentage, interceptions, QBR, which is what ESPN uses. It's, it's different from quarterback rating. They're, they're different. Time sacked rushing attempt, and then uh, time sack, and then went to, to the – a lot of these lists are leaving out the rushing numbers and, and the difference Garrett Green makes with his legs. Does that not count anymore? I mean, do, he's a running quarterback, so should his rushing numbers not even matter? I mean, he's in an offense that's a run-first offense, and his legs is what makes him so daggone so, – such a daggone threat, along with his downfield passing ability. But you got rushing attempts, rushing yards, yards per rush, rushing touchdowns. And then at the end, I put the PFF score you know, just to, you know, get an idea where he's at there or where everybody's at there as a comparison. And maybe because I'm biased and I wanted him to have a higher number than everybody else. <laughs> no, in all honesty, uh, I didn't know what the other guy's uh, numbers were. I knew Garrett had a high number, didn't know what the rest of them were. So I decided to throw it in. But when you look at these numbers here, what sticks out to me is first off, Garrett Green. Okay, he didn't have as many yards as Rocco Beck, but he also basically played in two less games. Yes, he started the pit game, but he went down with an injury in the first series of the game. Threw only two passes in that game and then went out with an injury and didn't play at all against Texas Tech. 
So he basically put up these numbers in 11 games, essentially. So he might have had more more completions and more attempts and more yards had he played two games. Now, would he have eclipsed Rocco Beck? Probably not, but he would have been closer. Now, you look at yards per attempt. It leads all these guys. Garrett Green was one of the best in the country at downfield passing. What they call the big-time throw percentage, he had one of the highest in the country last year. And those are long passes. I think it's 15 yards or higher. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But 8.7 yards per attempt. So he was he got his completions. A lot of his completions were done on longer throws. Touchdowns. He had only 16 touchdowns, but that's because he ran the ball a lot. Okay? He's part of that. But he was still third on the list behind Beck and then Jefferson. Now, in all fairness, Avery Johnson – didn't start playing until late in the season and didn't start. It's my understanding. He didn't start a game until, or didn't play a full game rather until the bowl game. So, but, and that's part of my point here. When you look at his numbers and a lot of them being so low, cause he didn't play a whole lot. So how in the world can you already rate him over Garrett green who started an entire season and led his team to nine wins. It's mind boggling to me, especially when you look at green skill set compared to Johnson's, everybody's going to point to Johnson's running. Is Garrett Green not a runner? Is he not a running quarterback? Look at his yards per carry. 6.4. Avery Johnson, 5.7. Does that not matter, folks? And then, but let's get back to the let's get back to the other rest of the list. All right, touchdowns. Or I'm sorry, completion percentage. This is where Green gets deemed, and I get it. Only 52.9% completion percentage. Yes, he has to improve it. Yes, he's working on improving it. And yes, he and the staff have have openly admitted that he needs to work on it. That's the biggest weakness in his game. But considering a huge portion of his throws were weight, were down the field, but I will admit, yes, he's he's the weakest in that category on this list. Then you look at interceptions. He threw only four interceptions in those 278 attempts. That's remarkable. And other than Avery Johnson, zero, because he only threw 66 passes, it's the best on the list. You got his QBR is the second highest on the list behind Avery Johnson. Time sacked. He only was sacked five times, folks. In 278 pass attempts, he was only sacked five times. Now, a lot of that is credit to the O line, but a lot of that is also credit to the fact he's able to escape the pocket and get away. Now, KJ Jefferson, on the other hand, sacked 42 times, and he's supposedly a running quarterback as well. Rushing attempts. 120 attempts. He had, what, 41 less attempts than K.J. Jefferson yet had over 300 more yards and and a lot more yards per carry. Then you look at his rushing touchdowns, 13 compared to two for Jefferson, three for Beck. Beck's not a runner, though, in all fairness. And, yes, Avery Johnson had seven touchdowns. On only 52 rushing attempts. That's that's impressive. I will I will give him that. It's impressive. But when you look at look at the overall body of work here, yes, Garrett needs to improve his passing percentage. But in every other category, how does he not stack up against everybody else? And if you're going to say Rocco Beck's better than him, or compare their numbers at least, look at the rushing. Rocco's not a rushing quarterback, I admit, but Garrett is, and he's great. He's elite at it. He's he's putting up numbers that haven't been put up at West Virginia since a guy named Pat White. Wouldn't you say he was pretty freaking good? Won four straight bowl games, including include BCS games. One against Georgia and one against Oklahoma in his career. Wouldn't you say Pat White was a pretty elite college quarterback? Ended up getting drafted in the NFL second round. Garrett Green is putting up those kind of numbers, folks. But he's still getting making it on almost nobody's top five list when it comes to Big 12 quarterbacks. Now, I know maybe we're splitting hairs here, and I, I acknowledge all four of these are good quarterbacks. And I, I actually, when you look at Rocco Beck's numbers, they were even better than I expected them to be. He had a hell of a year, and I expect him to get even better this year. So, so it's probably splitting hairs when you look at him and Garrett. But to me, when you look at his ability to lead the team, his experience, and he's such an elite runner, I still don't see how you put Rocco ahead of Garrett. I really don't. I really don't. Now, I want to hear what you think. Should Garrett Green be ahead of Rocco Beck, Avery Johnson, and K.J. Jefferson 
on anybody's top five quarterback list. I definitely think he should be ahead of Avery because of experience more than anything. So I want to know what you think, though. Uh, am I am I splitting hairs here with this, or would you agree that Garrett Green deserves to be in the top five in Big Twelve quarterbacks? Let me know in the comments. Also, shout out to my VIP, my paid VIP channel members of the day. I want to give a shout out first off to new VIP member TS. Thank you, TS, for being a VIP member here at Coos's Corner. Also, want to give a shout out to longtime members Todd Biela. Brandon Bailey and Shannon Miller. Thank you all for your support. If you want to become a member of this club, hit the join button below or go over to my channel homepage. Hit join there beside my profile photo. It shows you the two levels I offer, the perks that go with each level. Hit join again, and you can join right there. Uh, very easy way to support what I do here on the channel. Also, guys, you can support me for absolutely free by liking the video. Hit that thumbs up button. Sharing it with your family and friends. Helping me get to 10,000. I'm on my way to 10K. Need your help to get there, so subscribe to the channel, but make sure your notification bell's on and notifications are on on your device so that you'll be notified of future uploads and future live streams. And last but not least, drop a comment below. Remember the video I told you I would link to at the end where I rank my Big 12 quarterbacks? You can check it out right here in the top corner of your screen. Click on it right now. Have a top-shelf day and Q Country Roads.